is your captain. Welcome to Flying Solo. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome back to another Flying Solo where I take three of your questions and give them some answers. This week's episode is brought to you by my Gear Vault, the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. You can download it for free right now in the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. So let's get to the first question. From Nature Photo Show, thanks, that name's really good. Be sure to submit your names and locations when you're submitting your questions. I'll tell you how to submit later on in this episode. I recently started a YouTube channel with in-field videos and post-processing tutorials, etc. I have a very long way to go, especially with videos in the field. I'm always alone when I'm out and currently use a Sony Action Cam X3000 to record the videos along with an audio recorder. What are some things I could do to improve my video quality given I have no assistance? Do I need to bite the bolt and get a D850 to shoot the videos? I am hoping the answer is yes, even if it isn't. Well, the answer is no. Uh, I don't think if you're shooting video by yourself that you should buy a Nikon. As much as I love the D850 and we have five of them here at the factory, the simple answer is a 6D Mark II or a 77D or a 80D. Anything with dual pixel AF is gonna help you out, especially knowing that with the Canon Connect app, you can sit there, go pick a spot, touch the screen on your phone inside the Connect app and have it focus and track you where you need it. I didn't have that when I started and this is what I would recommend. And if you're doing it yourself, you can go out there and pick up one of these cameras and it will give you the ability to do this much better. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect if you're doing this yourself. You just need to get out there and use something better, in my opinion, than the, than the, uh, the, the Sony Action Cam X3000. Not saying that you can't get it done or do it, but you'll have more control when you pick up a DSLR like the ones that I mentioned earlier. So that's what I have to say about that. If you guys agree, disagree, or have different opinions, please leave them down below in the comments. Next up, we have Sam Matthews. I started my photography business approximately four months ago. My website is currently being built. Is there any advice you can offer that can push my website to be the success I am striving for? Uh, I think you need to not put so much value on just building your website. Now, yes, I promote Squarespace for having your own place to have your website, and it is important, but you have to say to yourself, great, I've built a website, now what? So what? I built a cool place, who's gonna go there? If nobody knows you exist, you could have the greatest website in the world, and nobody's gonna show up because they don't know you're there. So that's why when I started, I wasn't very happy because I thought my website was awesome when I was looking for photo jobs. I thought I was gonna get a lot of photo jobs because I had this awesome website, but I wasn't getting people to my site. And just putting it out there into the world doesn't mean people are gonna show up. So my advice to help you get successful on your site is you gotta use the social channels that are out there to try and give people a reason to go check out your site. Whether it's Instagram, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, you need to be seen. That's the only way that your website is gonna get the traffic. You're not gonna rank on search very easy for big keywords like photography. You really need to put the time in on social media, interact with people to get people back to your site. Now moving on to the next one. We got Richard, DeBerry, I plan on selling my prints and I'm making a website to do so. How do I eliminate or minimize people being able to print the images themselves off my site? I was planning on using Wix. Thoughts? Question mark. Uh, Wix is another website that's out there. They promoted heavily during the Super Bowl. I've been promoting Squarespace, that's what I like to use, though Wix did look pretty good with their drag and drop infrastructure. But the question here revolves around having people not steal photos off your website. Well, this is one of those things that I stopped worrying about a long time ago. If you're selling something of substance, then you're gonna sell edition type prints that are signed and numbered. Other than that, if somebody's gonna download it and print it, there's nothing you can do about it. I think you put up a nice resolution image 
that looks good on the site, looks good online, and not worry about locking it up so somebody can't literally right click, which I don't even care if I could right click, if I can drag and I can take your image, it doesn't matter, it's easy. Or I could take a screen grab and take the image. The only other alternative is putting blatant watermarks all over the thing, which makes you look bad in my opinion, or you could use super low res images that are gonna look like crap and then nobody's gonna to wanna to buy your prints because they don't look good at all. So that's the paradigm that's going on right now. Now, if you look at a guy like Trey Ratcliffe in Stuck in Customs, that's his website, for years he's been putting up the fullest of full res JPEG images, fully edited, fully usable for you to download and print on your own, but he sells edition prints that he gets a lot of money for. So I think this is just something where you don't worry about it. But like I said in the question before, so you've built a website, you've got prints for sale, who's gonna buy them? I'm not trying to discourage you here, I'm just trying to let you know that you need to get people to your site that are interested in purchasing. They're not just gonna show up out of nowhere and be like, damn, I wanna buy some of these prints. That's not the case. So if you'd like to go ahead and submit your question for Flying Solo, you can go to bit.ly slash fro critiques to do so. And that's where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Right now, you can go to this link and you can submit your Flying Solo questions. You can check out the last Flying Solo by clicking here on the screen and also clicking on the other video that shows up because it's a super cool video. So go do something. Maybe I'll answer your question.